Yeah. So essentially what long COVID is for those who aren't aware is um, people that have symptoms beyond the acute infection with COVID. So it could happen, you know, typically it's within 30 or 30 days, you know, 30 days beyond a negative test and longer they're still having fatigue or brain fog or skin rashes or joint pain or muscle pain or headaches. Um, you know, the symptoms are fevers, uh, sleep difficulties, that sort of thing. And no one could explain it uh, like anything, right? And then recently this study came out and said, well, look, long COVID is actually Epstein-Barr virus reactivation. And wow. the, symptom, the symptoms of, of long COVID are the same symptoms uh, or possible symptoms of Epstein-Barr virus reactivation. And so, you know, what, what they're saying is 30% of uh, the COVID population experiences long COVID. So you, you sustain COVID and it could be asymptomatic to severe. So you could have long COVID symptoms and have had asymptomatic infection. And essentially what it is, is the, the COVID induces inflammation that drives reactivation of Epstein-Barr virus. And then the Epstein-Barr virus reactivation is the actual driver of the long COVID symptoms. Um, and you might say, well, I've never had Epstein-Barr virus. Well, you probably have, if we tested the planet, 95% of the planet would test positive for history of Epstein-Barr. Just you probably, if you, if you don't know about it and have never had, <clears throat> had mono, then you probably contracted Epstein-Barr as a child because most contracted at that age and, and childhood Epstein-Barr is asymptomatic. It's not unless you get it in your teenage or adult years for the first time that you experience mono. So um, they found that in their cohort of COVID patients uh, with long COVID, 66% had Epstein-Barr virus reactivation. So, um, and that's the, the clearest connection they've found yet um so that's the that's the short you know spiel of this whole study but essentially you can test Epstein-Barr virus antibodies I do it all the time uh and Epstein-Barr virus early antigen IgG or viral capsid antigen IgM are what indicate reactivation in the study they had two patients where both of those were negative uh but they had long COVID symptoms so they tested them for Epstein-Barr virus DNA via PCR in the blood and they were positive. So that would be a third way to try it or to test for it. Mm. Um, so what's awesome is with long COVID, there's been no, no treatment to perform because they didn't know what caused it. But now that we know Epstein-Barr is involved, then we have a whole world of things available to us because, you know, from a functional medicine perspective, Epstein-Barr virus, we deal with all the time because um, ninety-five percent of the planet's had exposure. A percentage of those people, uh, it's clinically relevant at any given time. So, if you're in my office, and you know your history and symptoms and stuff suggest that it's involved, we'll run Epstein-Barr virus antibodies to see is it clinically relevant now. And if it is, what do we want to do? Principles over pandemic. Same things we do for COVID, essentially support antiviral immune defenses. We can do things that are directly anti-Epstein-Barr. We want to practice the antiviral nutrition, get antiviral sleep, you know, do antiviral exercise, take vitamin C, you know, all the things that, you know, Fauci says doesn't work, but have worked since before Fauci was born. So um, that's awesome because, you know, these people don't need to suffer any longer if they work with someone that can help them, you know? So that's, that's basically the topic for today. You all, we all probably know someone um, with, with this going on. They probably, they just might not know what long COVID is, but it's like, Hey, I'm having undulating fevers and sleep difficulties. I don't know why came out of nowhere. Well, maybe they were an asymptomatic COVID that now have symptomatic long COVID. Um, again, driven by Epstein-Barr. That sounds like what happened to me in December of 19, you know, like when they say now that it probably was already here. Yep. And that would have been about the time I contacted you to do the first consult in January. Uh -huh. And because, you know, I, I tested positive for Epstein-Barr and uh -huh. 
I, I had, I mean, like it was awful and I coughed and coughed and coughed for weeks. Yeah. And you know, we didn't know what it was. <laughs> and well, my, yeah. Kate, my wife thinks she had it in November of 19. Cause she had, yeah. she had that cough for weeks. That was like, it wasn't all the time, but she would cough and then like be, uh, and I'd be like, come on drama queen. And she's like, literally, I, I can't breathe in that time. And then it would go away, you know, but then later and the baby had it too. So yeah, you know, we think, we think we had it before it was cool. Yeah. Um, or at least they did. I had it. I think I've had it twice. And I think that I had it. I had it before it was cool in February, but then I had it after it was cool too. Yeah. So. Scott had it last July when it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And hot. And hot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, they've been making me rethink my uh, Super Bowl party, what I thought was a IBS uh, major knockdown. I'm thinking that, yeah, maybe it could have been, you know, even before they mentioned it was around because it was like the sweats and mm -hmm. the fever and what, and it took me out for a week and I've never had an IBS episode to last a week. Yeah. Well, I didn't have I didn't have IBS, but I had the night sweats and, and fatigue and achiness. Yeah, for like four days. I haven't took a day off of work once. Um, so. Yeah, I was putting it on IBS, and who knows? Maybe it maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a combo. I don't know. Yeah, well, some COVID is is uh, GI only, by the way. Mm -hmm. So you could you could have COVID, and an individual could have COVID that's just GI, no upper respiratory stuff. Um, they've they've known that since early on. I have studies on that from early on. Some people only have GI and liver symptoms, mm -hmm. so um, that definitely could have been you. But here's the list of you know, like I said, fatigue, brain fog, sleep difficulties, joint pain, sore throat, muscle pain, headaches, fever, GI upset, skin rash. So again. Epstein-Barr reactivation, subclinical. You can have Epstein-Barr and not have mono. Right, just like you can have diabetes or blood sugar issues and not have diabetes. So if you're having night sweats and undulating fevers and, and sore throat or swollen lymph glands and achiness, you know, it might it might be this.